Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is fantastic to be here. But I mean that because I thought I was going to die on the way here. I decided to go uh, car share with another act. He says, I'll pick you up at six. I thought, right, it's rain. We'll get here in no time. Took us an extra hour to get here because he turned up in a car that was that old. I thought it was fucking haunted. <laughs> Didn't really fill me with the confidence on the day where we have the worst storm of the century. We're driving down the motorway, it's hammering it down a rain, and one of his window wipers work. And all I can see is him peeking through a little slit of all he can see, while the car is shaking itself to bits, just going, like someone stabbing a Wookiee. <laughs> I'm sat here, not even excited about the gig, I'm excited to getting to Liverpool, people. I come from Leicester. It was the most terrifying two hours of my life. He said, oh, it'll just be me and you. It wasn't, though. It was me, him, and the ghost of the last owner, I presume. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going for a stage at the minute where I fear for my life far too often. I think my girlfriend's going to murder me. <laughs> right, so we've been in a relationship a while. Give me a cheer if you're in a relationship. <laughs> right, those of you who've been in a relationship for a little while might notice your girlfriend may now and again threaten to kill you. My girlfriend does this to me on a regular basis. When it first started, it was cute little things like, Lewis, take your shoes off or I'll shoot you. <laughs> and I'll go, oh, you're just being cute. You don't mean it. I'll try better. Right, then she started watching these Netflix murder documentaries. <laughs> and all of her threats started to get very specific. <laughs> I walked in from work the other day. I've made myself a cup of tea. Gone into the living room and I've gone to put it on the coffee table. She went, what are you doing? I said, put my tea on the coffee table. She said, why? I said, because we haven't got a fucking tea table, babe. <laughs> she said, put a coaster under that, or I'll put antifreeze in your tea. <laughs> I said, why? She said, it'll take three cups to kill you, and it tastes sweet like sugar, so you'll never know. <laughs> Fantastic. I walked up the stairs with my shoes on the other day. She said she was going to stab me with a knife made of ice. Again, I asked why. She said, because the murder weapon will melt. <laughs> They'll never find it. Fantastic. So basically what she's doing when I'm not at home and I'm gigging, she's watching murder documentaries with a notepad. <laughs> she's also told me she's well equipped to chop up my body. Because I quote, I'm too fat to carry in one go. <laughs> I come in the other night, she's watching one of these documentaries. And she said, this bloke killed 12 people before getting caught by the police. I thought, oh, that's awful. She went, I know. He could have doubled that if he wore an air net. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, people say to me, Lewis, if she's that bad, why don't you leave her? Because with these documentaries, you're not just getting what the murderers have done. You're getting the detective side of it. So even if I left her, she's fully trained to track me down. That's concerning. She's laughing like too much. <laughs> I'm getting PTSD. Um, but even all this, I can't, still can't afford she don't mean it. She's just watching it. She's overstimulated. But she said something to me the other week that genuinely made me think she was going to murder me. I come in the house. It's wet. It's filthy. I've had an horrible day. I'm walking through the living room. And I look down. And I see I've still got my shoes on on the new carpet. I thought, if she finds out she's going to murder me, and they'll never find my body. And I turn around and she's fucking there. <laughs> because apparently I'm in a relationship with the girl from The Ring. <laughs> she says to me, Lewis, take your shoes off and clean this fucking floor. Or I'll bury you under the shed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a bad mood. Like I say, it's been a long day. I'm filthy. I'm wet. I'm just miserable. So I snap. I said, babe, we ain't got a shed. She says, then I'll buy one and I'll bury you under that. <laughs> and that's when I knew she was at the height of anger because she's never offered to pay for a fucking thing in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing about that joke is this is going to go up on YouTube. And as soon as that comes out, I can't do that bit anymore because she won't be my girlfriend. But uh, I overthink it. I think I am just overthinking. I've always overthought, even when I was a kid. I went to Catholic schools. Give me a shout if you went to Catholic schools. 
I love that. No, what? I, I've done that bit loads. No one's ever gone, woo! That was all, woo. Don't worry. I'm not about to tell you a bit where a priest interfered with me. <laughs> Although this is the only job where you wish you had, because I'd get loads more material out of it. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Catholic schools, and they say weird things to me. They say shit to me like, Lewis, remember, Jesus died for your sins. I thought, I'm only seven. <laughs> Didn't take much to take him down, did it? <laughs> I think the worst thing I'd done at that point was put my sister's Barbie in a toaster. <laughs> oh, right, quick backstory. Barbie was the name of my sister's hamster. <laughs> and they'd carry on, they'd say even weirder stuff to me like, Jesus died and he rose three days later. I thought, well, he might have died for my sins, but he couldn't stick to it, could he? And that's when I gave up on Catholic religion, because I ain't worshipping a quitter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I put a lot of weight on recently. Uh, but uh, I'm in denial. I keep thinking next week I'll be thin again, so I don't buy new clothes. That's why my T-shirts are so short. Because the problem I have is I put them on and they're far too tight. So this is how I have to put T-shirts on. I go like that, and I have to bend down and stretch them over my knees. Give them a good stretch. I'm like, yeah, golden. I haven't gained a pad. Problem is... If I do it for too long, I get like saggy knee marks down here. <laughs> and with this haircut, I look like a lesbian that's lost her tits. <laughs> now, I know like it's good that people laugh at that, but it don't half hurt my feelings. <laughs> I did it uh, last night, and I told like lesbian, like, eh, and I was like, eh, it's funny, because all of you know some woman who looks like me. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Someone sat there and gone, oh, he looks like Shirley from Tesco's. <laughs> She knows Shirley from Tesco's. <laughs> what else were we going to do? This is new material. I am... Uh, bear with me. Professionalism at its key. I was uh, talking to my little brother the other day, and he's 10 years younger than me, so there is a bit decent age gap, and we're talking about the differences in growing up. And uh, I said to him, did Dad ever have the birds and the bees talk with you? He said, no. I said, so why did you learn you know, about sex and foreplay and like, talking to women and stuff like that? It's what he said, ladies and gentlemen, straight away without missing a beat. Internet porn. <laughs> I thought, wow. I learned in parks and in bushes. <laughs> and then I thought, how mad is that, that he just had access to porn? Because if I wanted porn, I'd have to look in parks and in bushes. <laughs> and I said to him, you can't just do what they do in porn. Because if I recreated the porn I watch, I'd get arrested. <laughs> and it'd make it really awkward between me and my stepmom. <laughs> now what I love the most about that joke is the blokes that laugh the loudest are the ones that watch that poem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you on a quick little story. I'm in bed the other night, right? My partner wakes me up. She goes, babe, babe, wake up. I said, what's wrong? He said, I think there's someone downstairs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I like to think of myself as a bit of a feminist. I think, you know, everyone should have equal rights. So I, being a modern man, went, well, you better go and check them. <laughs> she said, no, you're the man, you go check. I'm like, right, cool. Feminist's gone then, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> and I'm lying in bed. Now, you might think I'm a coward, but I was thinking to myself, how do I make her go downstairs and check? And genuinely, I know you're all thinking, you horrible man. But again, equal rights. They should be able to. And I'm lying there thinking, how oh, do I get out of this? I don't want to get stabbed for an old TV and a friend's box set. <laughs> and I've gone, oh, babe, you're right. I think there is someone downstairs. I can hear him. <gasps> and it sounds like he's in the living room. <gasps> and it sounds like he's got his shoes on. <laughs> and now we're buying a new shed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Lewis Taylor.